we're now going to turn to the HER2 space, and we're going to start with adjuvant therapy. Uh, at this year's ASCO meeting, we're going to see the first results from the Affinity trial, which is adding pertuzumab to trastuzumab-containing regimens as adjuvant therapy for early-stage HER2-positive breast cancer. Uh, Jose, I believe you were the PI of the steering committee. Yep. You want to talk about that trial? Sure, absolutely. So we are going to be presenting the study. This is a large study. It has over 4,000 patients. And what we uh, showed, we met, the study met its primary endpoint, so an improvement uh, in IDFS uh, that was significant, that had uh, a, a, a powerful hazard ratio. Uh, what we also are learning in these trials is that the control arms, the arms that receive Herceptin and chemotherapy alone, these arms perform better than historically. So if you look at the... Uh, at the uh, affinity, and if you look at the alto set, the, the tumors, the patients that receive the control arm, they do better than compared to HERA, to the historicals. So it's not going to be for everyone. I think that we will need to identify those patients that have a high risk of, or a higher risk of recurrence, and those will clearly benefit. So the discussion is not going to be on whether to use it, in my mind, but rather in whom to use it, and it's going to be based on uh, risk factors that are common, such as node positivity, ER status, and then hopefully in other biomarkers of HER2 dependency that we'll need to identify. So, I mean, it's interesting because everybody is using at least ACTHP or TCHP right now in the neoadjuvant setting. All Affinity is doing is adding another 11 doses, I guess, yeah. you know, of pertuzumab. Yeah. And, I mean, are most people, is it going to change practice? Kim, is it going to change your practice? Um. Probably not. I mean, you know, at least from what I understand of the results that are available to date from Affinity, you know, there's a large percentage of patients with facing HER2 positive early stage breast cancer that are going to present with node positive disease and are going to present with ER negative disease. And those are the patients that certainly I will continue to do what I've been doing, which is a full year of pertuzumab. Six, I use TCHP a lot in the preoperative setting, and then I'll continue it in the adjuvant setting. In fact, I think it will only increase my use in that setting because probably we'll get insurance coverage based on the positive endpoint. Any other comments? Denise, Debbie? I mean, I think, um, you know, as we start seeing these adjuvant trials, I mean, our control arm patients are doing so well. And I think when we take and extrapolate these subgroups, I think those are the ones that we're going to apply these agents to because a good majority of the patients are doing well without all the additional therapies. And so what to Kim, you know, was just saying, I think, really picking out those subgroups that are really the most likely to derive the benefit um, are the ones that I'll be looking at for extending it. I think it's easier because it's given concurrently with Herceptin versus something like Right, it's not really doing anything different. It's just right. an additional cost. I, I think there's something... 20 more minutes of infusion, a half hour more of infusion. I, I think there's something unique about antibody therapy because the antibodies in the HER2 space and just in general in breast cancer have been the ones that have had the biggest impact on survival in the metastatic setting. And it could be an immunological uh, reason. Uh, and I think it's really impressive that the addition of uh, pertuzumab in the metastatic setting gave you a survival hazard rate of, you know, 0.6 in the mid 0.6s. So that, that's a pretty strong effect. So um, I think this is a, a big deal. And, uh, you know, it's hard to say how this is going to play out and how many lives it's going to save as we start to getting really long-term data. Uh, but uh, I think it's a, a big step forward when you look at all the big steps we've taken in, in uh, breast cancer advance. I think the uh, improving adjuvant therapy where you're clearly having an improvement in the cure rate and when you take a big step, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, important. Are, are there any concerns about pertuzumab toxicity, diarrhea? Have you seen more diarrhea? We have seen a little bit more diarrhea, but it's self-limited. It's not very severe. It's a very clean compound. I mean, I think the combination, we learned this from Cleopatra. We have not seen any additional signals. Uh, there's a population group that perhaps we need to pay more attention, which are the elderly. So the elderly patients have more diarrhea than, yeah. uh, that's perhaps the only group that I would pay attention, but otherwise, it's pretty clean and, you know, no, cardiacs, no cardiac effects. Yeah. The rush is minimal as compared to Iberal and Mousseau. Yeah. yeah, I'd say be careful about what you're blaming the diarrhea on, especially if yeah. you're giving the TCHP regimen. Um, I'm yeah. consistently impressed because I think we're really cautioning patients about the diarrhea and then they get it. And then we all kind of freak out and have we stop the pertuzumab and they still have diarrhea. So I think you have to just be 
um, careful and understand that there's lots of things during this period um, that can cause diarrhea. Well, let me throw out a question for all of you then. Do you think carbo is needed? No, no. In fact, I and a lot of people, it's the first thing I'll drop in a TCHP if they have trouble so with carbo. Or reduce the dose. Either reduce the dose or drop it. Yeah, I agree. That's I the agree. first thing I usually do with TCHP. Although in the metastatic... But Kim is like, Kim in the, was like no, giving me the look. Although, although in no, the randomized no. metastatic study, in fairness, there was a comparison between 100... TH and TCH? Yeah, uh, yeah but, but it wasn't straight. Right, it, it was, was in, the, in the control seven. line, it was, it was 100 and it was 75. But I think that uh, uh, Kimberly has a very good uh, point on the um, issue of the adjuvant data it set. Doesn't it doesn't say anything yet. We don't yeah. look for this. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, no. The TCHP uh, subgroup is the one that has more diarrhea. Yeah. And, and this is something that you need to take into account, clearly. I have a comment and a question, really. Maybe, Jose, you can. What, what does it do to, this, to the use of neoadjuvant trials to predict adjuvant trials? Is this another positive yeah. check I think so. in the list? I think so. I think so, because if you look at the Neosphere trial that the FDA approved based yeah. on PCR as an, okay. as, as an indicator of long-term benefit, uh, this is the trial that confirms, indeed, that there is a correlation between PCR and disease-free survival. Uh, now, in the area of lapatinib, it has been much more complicated. I think that is difficult to interpret. But this is a clean comparison. So I, I think that there is clearly, uh, in the HER2-positive space, a correlation between uh, complete pathological response and, and DFS. I think it that is. Personally, I think that lapatinib doesn't pair up with pertuzumab pharmacologically, yeah. mechanistically, yeah. it's just a weak yeah. HER2 inhibitor. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, no, we have better HER2 inhibitors coming yeah. down the yeah. pike. Yeah. Yeah. Like can, Iraq, I ask, can I make one comment to the point that Kim was making that I think is very important? Uh, I think one advice that uh, we need to take into account that she mentioned that is very important is that patients on pertuzumab, when they have diarrhea, they can have diarrhea because of something else. Right. And I had an example uh, in my clinic very recently. A patient of mine who was on adjuvant pertuzumab and, and Herceptin began to develop diarrhea. It was severe. And I stopped pertuzumab. And you know the diarrhea went on and on and on. The patient had new onset uh, celiac disease. Really? Uh, at, wow. At, 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 at the end. And I had delayed the whole workup uh, for at least two and a half months because, you know, yeah. it said it's pertuzumab, and it was not, so. Well, I think the other clinical <laughs> pearl there is the drug does stick around. So yeah. I've seen clinicians who have stopped it and it doesn't clear up after like two days, and then they restart the pertuzumab with the next <laughs> right. cycle. Right. So right. the half-life of these antibodies is quite long. <laughs> so I've had patients who've come to see me for a second opinion who said, should I continue on the pertuzumab or not? And um, the reality is it takes a while to recover if, right. in fact, it is the pertuzumab causing the diarrhea.